A oia. Aloha nui noho ia kākoa pauloa e ko Hawaii nei pai aina. Ke aloha aina ia kākoa pau. Mahalo a nui i ko kāko hui ane i keia hia hinei. Mahalo a nui no ko o ko kipa ana mai i keia. Ka ho o paa paa ana i waina noho i o nga moho e holo ana. No ke kulana o meia no keia ke kulana kauhale o Honolulu nei. Welcome uh, to all of you. Welcome everyone for attending the Honolulu mayoral debate on Kanaka Maoli issues. I am your hostess, Hinale Moana Wong Kalu, and I'd like to acknowledge each and every one of you for tuning in. I'd also like to acknowledge our two candidates, uh, to Rick Blanjardi and Keith Amemia. Mahalo to the both of you for joining us. And also, I'd like to recognize our two sign language interpreters, Laura Safransky and Jenny Blake. And a big shout out and aloha to Helani Sonorapale for helping to bring this event to you and for being our most illustrious timekeeper this evening. Um, speaking about the timekeeper uh, for our candidates, we understand that perhaps there are other examples that we have seen where people aren't quite conscious of time, uh, candidates running for political office. And so uh, we will show them the very best that Hawaii has to offer. And uh, we look forward to your answers as best you can to keep them under three minutes. And at the, the ring of three minutes, Helene will make sure to alert us to that. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our two distinguished mayoral candidates. Our first candidate is Rick Blanjardi. Rick has been a familiar face on television as general manager of Hawaii News Now, KGMB, and KHNL. Rick grew up in a working class Boston family that moved to Honolulu in 1965 when his dad was transferred to be a machinist at Pearl Harbor. Rick played football at the University of Hawaii. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Blanjardi. Thank you, Hina. Good evening. So is Aloha. it? Good evening. Aloha. Do you, do you, Aloha. Would you uh, like? I, I, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, our next okay. candidate, and okay. then we will come back uh, right, to no. both of you. Okay. Mahalo. Okay. Mahalo. And our next candidate for the office of mayor is Mr. Keith Amemia. He was raised in Mauna Lua, uh, often referred to as uh, Hawaii Kai, but uh, we know that in our um, in our culture, that area is proudly known as Mauna Lua. And he attended public high school there. He worked as a business executive, a nonprofit leader, and lawyer over the last 30 years. He is running for political office for the first time to serve as our mayor of Honolulu. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Keith Amemia. Aloha. Mahalo. Aloha. Aloha, aloha. Now, uh, to our candidates. There are 10 questions that are provided to us from various Kanaka Maoli communities and leaders on Oahu. Each candidate, each of you, will be uh, given three minutes to answer each question. Uh, we will alternate uh, on who will answer first. And uh, each of you, I do believe, was given the question ahead of time, except one which we will ask at the end. And one second. <clears throat> now, let's see. Okay, for our first question. Waimanalo Gulch, located in the Moko of Waianae, is at its full capacity and at least four of the replacement sites currently being looked at is located in Waianae and or Kahuku 
both with predominantly Kanaka Maoli and Polynesian populations. There is one site in Hawaii Kai or Mauna Lua, which is being considered. So our first question this evening comes from Kauka Ohu Wahilani from Nakua Aloha'aina Owe'anai, who is with us today live. Aloha Kauka Ohu. Aloha Hina, Aloha Yolani. Aloha, Aloha. aloha. Um, Keith. So my, my question, thank you for having me. And as a representative, as a community member of the Waianae Coast, as my question would be as, as mayor, what would be your solutions and an alternative site for the garbage waste on the municipal or the municipal landfill? Because as you folks know, we on the Waianae Coast has been carrying that burden of, of the last two landfills, whether it was in Waianae Valley as now as Waimanalo Gulch. So my question would be, and we do, and we only, and we have also the only construction and industrial waste landfill in the PVT on Waianae Coast. So, our question would be for the mayor candidates would be what would be the solutions and for our garbage our garbage issues because we on the Waianae coast we are, we kind of we're taking everybody's rubbish so is there an alternative site and what would be your solutions to that mahalo anui ya oe e kauka ohu candidates we would like to begin uh, with this first question seeking your answers to the question posed once again by kauka ohu wahilani Avoid a nine. We will hear from Rick Blanjardi first, and you now have three minutes. Please begin. Okay, thank you, Hina. But first of all, I just want to thank you for this opportunity tonight for the beautiful lay. And to tell you very honestly, I was very much looking forward to this conversation tonight because these are all issues which I am still learning greatly about. And I hope that the answers I offer tonight will be satisfactory to the best of my ability to make it really clear up front. I have a deep respect for our host culture. I want to really do right by our Hawaiian people. So that said, with respect to this question, I agree that the Waianae Coast has shouldered a large burden for the island's trash for decades. I also know there's been considerable attempts and actually millions of dollars spent in study to find an alternate site, but none was selected. And I also understand that the legislature passed the bill in the last session that will make it even more difficult to site a new landfill. So I believe this has been a major issue for the past three or four mayors from everything I've been able to learn, but it has never been resolved. So it'll be one more issue that the next mayor will need to focus on. And I'm sorry that I can't give you a more definite answer at this time, but it is an issue I will need to do, take a real deep dive on if I get elected. But I do have a couple of observations I would like to share on the topic of the island's trash. First, the Waianae Coast has not, has not received nearly enough in community benefits for the amount of noxious uses that have been placed there. I think we need to look at providing some kind of monetary relief for the folks living in Waianae and Nanakui. I mean, a lot of people have benefited from these landfills and we should be sharing that with the people who are putting up with that. And I'm surprised that that hasn't already been enacted. And lastly, it seems to me that we should be focused on reduction more and then landfilling less. And the reason why I say that is that, you know, we live on an island and eventually we're gonna run out of space. We just can't keep digging holes and filling them up with trash. Recently, I met with a group from the University of Hawaii and they were talking to me about this plasma arc program, which is expensive. But, you know, you have to remember, we are in the first year of the third decade of the 21st century. We should be employing technology to the best of our ability. And if we could possibly do that, for the sake of our land, and the sake of our people especially, then I'm gonna be in favor of trying to find ways to do that and look at the ROI, because I really do think that we're probably not gonna be able to come up with an adequate, adequate landfill site other than on the west side, and this could be a solution to our problems. Thank you. Mahalo, Rick. At this time, we would like to move on to the response from mayoral candidate, Keith Amemia. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, aloha everyone and mahalo for the opportunity tonight. It's an honor to be in front of all of you. Uh, I'd like to just quickly give you a, a, a little brief background to add to what Hina already told about me. Uh, born and raised on Oahu, lived here my entire life. Uh, Oahu is my home and it always will be. Uh, my wife and son are born and raised on Oahu as well. I've been married to 
my wife, Bonnie, for 24 years, and she's a chief financial officer. And our son, Chris, is a college age junior. Uh, two of the big impacts on my life that I'd like to share with you and tell you why it forms the basis for why I'm running for mayor was number one, when I was in high school, I was adopted or hanaid by my best friend's family uh, because my parents were having uh, problems and issues uh, of their own. That transformed my life. It taught me uh, a lot about um, giving back, you know, being selfless, uh, having gratitude, and taking uh, care of others in need. The other transformational part of my career or my life was after I was a litigation attorney out of, uh, out of college and law school, I became the head of the Hawaii High School Athletic Association. And that job uh, allowed me the opportunity to be in every community across Oahu, especially uh, areas that I've never been to as much before, whether it's the Leeward Coast or the nor Northern shores of Oahu. I learned and went to every community, got to meet a lot of people, learned firsthand of their issues, and learned how much working class people were struggling to survive. Uh, again, that formed uh, a really big impression on me and wanted me uh, to dedicate my career to public service. In terms of the issues here at hand about Waimanalo Gauch, um, this is environmental racism at its worst. It's unfair that one community should have two of our only landfills here on Oahu. Uh, it's unfair that the Leeward Coast has poor infrastructure, has poor facilities in their schools. We need to be fair. We need to provide more in attention uh, to areas like the Leeward Coast. And I'm committed as mayor to pay much more attention to areas like the uh, Leeward Coast and even the North Shore of Oahu. Uh, in terms of other sites for landfills, I know the city is working or looking at alternatives, and we need to look at alternatives. It's only fair, it's only right that we share the burdens of the entire island across the island and not just in one community. Uh, in terms of donations, I'll just point out, I did not receive any PVT landfill donations, but my opponent did, and I made a conscious decision not to accept donations from them. Thank you. Mahalo, Ki. Mahalo candidates for our first question of the evening. I, I must. Mahalo. Okay. Uh, mahalo Koka Ohu. Mahalo Koka Ohu for joining us. Yeah. Mahalo Rick and Mahalo Keith for your folks um, answers. Mahalo, appreciate it. Mahalo. Okay. So. Um, I must apologize to both of our candidates this evening as I did not give you um, an opportunity to perhaps initially address uh, the public before we, um, we started right into the questions. So I'm going to look now to Helani. Um, Helani, uh, do you have any thought? Um, because I didn't allow our candidates to uh, take a moment to say whatever they wanted prior to us asking the questions. And I realized that it was my mistake. Um, would you like to uh, uh, give us just a moment of advice? Uh, may we, uh, should we continue on? Uh, yeah, we could actually take, uh, we can give them two minutes if they wanna share a little bit more about their campaign. So I, we, I can put the timer on for two minutes. Thank you so much. Mahalo Helani. Um, yes, uh, and once again, my apologies to our candidates this evening. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I'm not going to leave my day job uh, to be uh, our uh, online moderator. Uh, this is the first time I've had the honor and privilege to do that. So thank you to the both of you for allowing me to be your moderator this evening. Uh, let us now... Um, take the next two minutes for each of you to uh, please uh, speak freely uh, at your will of, of what you would like to say to the Hawaiian community about your campaign. I'd like to look to you, Keith, uh, for your response. Please go ahead. Okay. Well, mahalo again for this opportunity. I, I kind of wanted to weave in my intro into the first question because I didn't know if I'd have an opportunity, but, but thank you again. And I just want to add that 
I want to recognize it's important that we all recognize that today is Indigenous Peoples Day, and it's an honor to be with all of you tonight. I know there's much to learn and unlearn and much of Hawaii's history to bring to justice. The events of the past can't be overlooked because they have influenced the very position many indigenous peoples and cultures have today. I'm committed to not just holding space, but to listen and learn and ensure that your voice is heard, that your culture is honored and your actions are the foundation of forward momentum towards a more just Hawaii. I understand that working with our communities is more about relationships, respect, and process that the, than the end result. And I'm committed to take those steps to build trust and hopefully work together to address the needs of all of our communities. In terms of Hawaiians in leadership, we all know there's a huge gap between government at all levels and the Native Hawaiian community. One thing that's clear to me is that Native Hawaiians need more of a voice both at the table and in positions of leadership and government. And as mayor, I'm committed to making sure that happens. I've been honored to work with many Native Hawaiian leaders over the years. I'm honored to have many strong Native Hawaiians on my campaign team, including women, especially women, uh, who have been invaluable to my campaign thus far. In my time at the Hawaii High School Athletic Association, I similarly had many great opportunities to work with Native Hawaiians, especially in the creation of outrigger canoe paddling as a state sport. Mahalo. Mahalo, Keith. We would turn our attention now, ladies and gentlemen, tuning in. Uh, we look forward to your next two minutes. Rick, please go ahead. You know, thank you. I've said all along that it's a real privilege to run for the mayor of the city and county of Honolulu, but even what transcends that is the privilege I've had to live here in most of my life. I came to Hawaii in 1965. I was not born here. I don't have Hawaiian blood, but my three children were born here and I've spent my life in service to this community. I started out coaching college football. You mentioned I played at the university, worked my way up to be the associate head football coach. Wasn't a very lucrative career. First baby came, came along. Rather than go to the mainland coach, I reinvented myself, stayed here, took a job in television 43 years ago. During that time, I moved up and led, was involved in a lot of senior positions throughout my career. I've had every title from president to CEO. Spent 13 years on the main. I worked my way through KGMB in 1984, was running KHNL. We brought UH Sports to television because I understood fundamentally the pride in this community. In fact, I want to make that statement. When I first announced I was going to run to mayor, I did the announcement at the old stadium park for two reasons, because the place has always been special to me. One, it was the first time I understood and saw firsthand the pride of Hawaii's people. And secondly, it was also the first place I began to fight for Hawaii. So throughout my entire broadcast career, you know, I have done things to serve this community and our Hawaiian people, especially in all of the many cultural events that we've brought to television. Whether it was through UH Sports or all the things that we've done through Mary Monarch, the Hokulea's Homecoming, the Kamehameha Song Contest, I could go on and on. Even when I first came back in 20, 2002, got together with Punanaleo, because when I came back, I couldn't believe we were not doing anything in Hawaiian on television. My life is in service to this place. I love this place. It has loved me back. And I promise to make sure our Hawaiian people have a voice and a seat at the table. Thank you. Mahalo, Rick. Thank you once again to our candidates for sharing just a little bit more of their campaign. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, tuning in, we will move on to our next question. As of August 31st, 2020, there are 16 Hawaiian homesteads with 4,329 homes and 60 agricultural lessees in the city and county of Honolulu. There are also 10,871 applicants on the DHHL waitlist for Oahu. Annually, approximately 30% of DHHL's trust funds are budgeted for maintenance and improvements for various infrastructure within the existing 16 homesteads. To the cost of $4.8 million in 2020 and $5.1 million in 2021. 
the HHL should not have to use trust funds to maintain infrastructure or provide basic services in our homesteads. Our next question comes from Auntie Homelani Shido from Kapolei Homestead, and I will be reading this question on her behalf. When you become mayor, what is your plan and how will you partner with DHHL to commit city and county of Honolulu resources to rectify the disparity of infrastructure maintenance on existing homelands? We will hear from Keith Amemia first. You have three minutes. Please begin. Mahalo. I met a couple of weeks ago with the villages of Kapole leadership and they expressed the same concerns that have been brought up today. And as mayor, I guarantee you, I promise you that DHHL will no longer have to pay for these types of infrastructure costs. The city committed to paying for these costs and covering these costs. And that's only right that the city lives up to its obligations. It's not fair, it's not just that DHHL should use its trust money for infrastructure costs when that money can be better spent and better utilized for more housing for Native Hawaiians. So you have my commitment to do that. Uh, in terms of actually how to get it done, as soon as I take office, I will meet quickly with the chairman of the DHHL and see how we can turn over the responsibility uh, to the city government. Uh, because again, this has been a decades long issue, if I'm not mistaken. And what's the, the problem as, it, uh, as expressed to me by the Villages of Kapole Association is that, uh, you know, DHHL has only limited funds too. So the infrastructure, the roads are of substandard nature and it's time to fix them. And it's again, just another injustice towards Native Hawaiians that needs to be rectified. So uh, as mayor, as, as I mentioned, uh, let's work on finally turning over the responsibility to the city where it should have been in the first place. I also commit to talking to the city about sewer infrastructure and handing over that responsibility into the hands of the city as it should. DHHL shouldn't have to deal with road infrastructure and maintenance or things like sewer infrastructure as well. The focus for DHHL needs to be on building more homes for Native Hawaiians. And as mayor, I'll commit to making sure that that happens. Thank you. Mahalo Keith for your response. We will hear from Rick Blanjardi next, and please okay. allow me to repeat the question. When you become mayor, what is your plan and how will you partner with the HHL to commit city and county of Honolulu resources to rectify the disparity of infrastructure maintenance on existing homestead lands? Thank Rick, you, Hina. Three minutes. Thank, Mahalo. Thank you, Hina. As I said at the outset, you know, a lot of tonight's um, questions that you provided, I know there's some that we will not see, were really, uh, for me, a real learning opportunity and a chance to really grow. So one of the things that I really feel like is that infrastructure maintenance on existing homestead lands should be treated the same as infrastructure maintenance in any other area of the city. I don't understand why there's that disparity. I believe the DHHL homeowners should be treated like all other taxpayers. I mean, after all, homesteaders pay gasoline taxes and they pay motor vehicle registration fees like all other taxpayers. So it's only fair that their roads and infrastructure are treated the same as other city roads and infrastructure. I don't understand the discrepancy there. It's just plain wrong to consider DHHL lands ineligible for city maintenance funding. You know, politicians are fond of talking about the importance of our host culture, but their actions show the opposite, which is why the situation is the way it is. Trust funds currently funding maintenance projects could then be repurposed, developed, and award additional homesteads to the thousands waiting on the list. And I believe that this in turn will help with our affordable housing challenges because DHHL homesteads are among the most affordable in Hawaii since there is no land cost. And finally, this year is the 100th anniversary of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act of 1920, a government-sponsored homestead program for native Hawaiians. And 100 years later, how many are still waiting? Thank you. Mahalo, Rick. I'd like us to continue on with this topic just for a few more moments. And uh, this is uh, a supplement to 
what uh, we are discussing at this current point. What action will you implement to ensure that city and county of Honolulu infrastructure maintenance and basic services are provided to future homestead communities developed by DHHL within six months of completion of a project. I'd like to look back now to you, Rick. You have two minutes. Well, I can tell you to me, this is a pretty short answer. I wanna have the closest relationship with DHHL. I really wanna build that relationship. Homesteaders and the overall Hawaiian community deserve that. And I, and I wanna be better than any other mayor has ever, ever been. So I treasure our root culture and I wanna be a champion for fairness in how the city government treats the native Hawaiian community. And as long as projects are built to code, there's no reason the DHHL community should not enjoy the same maintenance and basic services as other communities on Hawaii. It's that simple. Thank you. Mahalo Rick for your response. Keith, you will also have two minutes. Let me allow, uh, please allow me to repeat the question. What action will you take to ensure that city and county of Honolulu infrastructure maintenance and basic services are availed to future homestead communities developed by DHHL within six months of completion of a project? Keith, two minutes. Oh, Keith, you're on mute. Keep doing that. Uh, I apologize, folks. Uh, anyway, I was going to say, for starters, the city needs to proactively engage with DHHL's land development division to ensure that well before completion of a project, the city is poised to take over the infrastructure of that project right away. Uh, there should be no question of the city's obligation, and there should be no delay. So I'm very open to putting this in writing so that the city's obligated to take over infrastructure and DHHL is not left holding the bag and being responsible for the infrastructure for an indefinite period of time. Uh, if that entails requiring a memorandum of agreement between DHHL and the city, I'm more than willing to sign it. In addition to these types of uh, issues and problems that I wanna make sure don't happen again, I look forward to and want to work with DHHL to partner on building much more affordable housing. There's a lot of synergy between both sides and I, and I uh, am committed just as much as DHHL to, to build more affordable housing. To me, if we build more affordable housing for native Hawaiians, that just makes it better for everyone else, whether you're a native Hawaiian or non-native Hawaiian alike. I have a housing for all plan that specifically outlines the ways we're gonna address the 22,000 unit shortage of affordable housing here on Oahu. And I'd love to partner with DHHL to make sure that happens. Since I have 20 seconds, I wanna go back to Outrigger Canoe Paddling and have a shout out to Samantha Moikeha, Kamoa Kalama, the Van Giesen Ohana from Nanakuli, and Auntie Hanny Anderson for helping me kickstart Outrigger Canoe Paddling because I would be in big trouble if they didn't help me out and I have a lot of aloha for them. Mahalo. Mahalo, Keith. At this time, uh, just a brief commercial interlude while we allow our candidates, Rick and Keith, to collect their thoughts once again. And I'm going to put this out there to all of our Kanaka community. Auhe oko e na kanaka o keia aina nei. Keia no kokako manawa e alulike mai laulima a e kokua like, a e nā nā no hoi no keia muaku, no kapono o nā hanau na hou. It is up to us, to all of us Hawaiians, that we take this opportunity to raise our voices and to cast our, our vote for the next candidate who will be running for, who is running for mayor and will be serving not only all of the island of Oahu, but with a focus on honoring and respecting our Kanaka community. So ladies and gentlemen, for those of you tuning in, please, we hope to see your vote cast in uh, this upcoming election. And it is our kuleana to make sure that we do so. Don't forget everyone. Mai kako e moloa, awa moho i kako i ko kako kuleana, ai ho'o manao. Na kako no e ho kupa'a no keia muaku. Candidates, how are we doing? We're ready to holo mua? Yes. Ready. Yes, Thank you. Mahalo. 
Mahalo to our community leaders for these great questions so far. <clears throat> our next topic uh, for this evening. Former President Barack Obama and his friend Marty Nesbitt scoped the location for the, for the former president's new home in the Kanaka Maoli community of Waimanalo. Under the state's Shoreline Protection Act, property owners planning new developments along the coastline are required to obtain a special management area permit, local permit designed to protect the environment from coastal development. Officials with Honolulu's Department of Planning and Permitting granted Nesbitt an exemption who then divided the property in half in order to qualify for the exemption. If a single family home is less than 7,500 square feet, local officials can grant an exemption from the permitting process. Our next question comes from Kalani Kalima from Waimanalo. Kalani, please play our video. Hello, my Kako. Kalani Kalima from Nakuaina, Waimanalo, and also Save Our Sherwoods. Mahalo. Our question. Elani. Oh, one more. Shall I hold on more? Okay, aloha, aloha candidates. I uh, got another question. This one is pertaining to the old wall or uh, Pahono, as we call it. The property owner from that area had uh, applied for several exemptions that uh, our environmental laws had protected Hawaii for. And from these very types of elite that come to Hawaii and seek them out, would you be in favor of supporting the community to stop those exemptions from moving forward, the variants from moving forward at the city level? And I'm talking about the seawall at Pahono in the old village of Kui Kui, Nikola Opoko, Waimanalo. Mahalo. Mahalo to community leader of Waimanalo, Kalani Kalima, for that question. Once again, the question posed to our candidates this evening, would you be in favor of supporting the community to stop the seawall exemptions for Pahonu in Waimanalo, Oahu. We will hear from Rick Blanchardi first. You have three minutes. Thank you, Hina. Well, let me just stop by saying that from an ethical and legal viewpoint, I do believe in the uniform application of laws. There is no room for favoritism or special treatment in the application of the laws, period. But what interests me here is why we have differing approaches to beach preservation in different locations on our island. For example, in Waikiki, a state growing project was recently completed to provide critical erosion control measures specifically designed to improve the stability of Waikiki Beach. So my question is whether there are alternatives to extending the existing seawall as proposed by the landowners or removing the wall as proposed by the community. So to be very honest with you, I'd like to learn more about specific evidence-based and scientifically supported options so the city can be fully informed. I think this is something right now with sea level rise and all the other issues related to, we have to pay a special attention to it. But just, just know that all things being equal, however, there's clearly no room for special treatment or favoritism under the law. And as mayor, I can promise you strict adherence to that to the very, very best of my ability. Thank you. Mahalo Rick for your response. 
We will hear next from Keith Amemiya. Please allow me to re restate the question. Would you be in favor of supporting the community to stop the seawall exemptions for Pahonu in Waimanalo o Ahu? Keith, you have three minutes. Well, based on the information I know, uh, and you know, without having heard from the opposing side, I, I, I think I know enough to say that the answer is, you know, yes, I support the community and I'm opposed to seawalls of the nature that are being sought at that property. Uh, seawalls are uh, bit detrimental to our environment, as I know, as we all know, and uh, I, I, it's an issue regarding climate change and erosion. And so uh, it goes against what I'm proposing uh, in terms of addressing our many climate change issues and is part of, uh, you know, uh, the plan that I so, um, plan to have uh, as mayor in terms of enacting a climate action plan. As I've told people throughout the campaign trail, COVID-19 is the crisis of the moment, but climate change is the crisis of our lifetime. And we cannot have these types of seawalls and other uh, obstructions that will further exacerbate uh, you know, our beach erosion. Uh, we need to address these types of issues all across our island. Um, it's, it's been a problem too much. It's been a problem where the wealthy have gotten special treatment and I'm against that special treatment. It needs to come to an end. We need to all work together. We need to stop being selfish or catering to special interests and do what's in the general interest of the public good. So I'm in alignment with the community on this particular project. Uh, going further and broader, this is yet another issue that is a result of government not being responsive to communities, government not listening to communities. I propose the creation of an Office of Community Engagement. That office's sole purpose will be to go out into the communities, be proactive way ahead of any proposed project like the one in Waimanalo before the Sherwood Forest project is even proposed or put up in front of the city council for approval. Let's bring all the key stakeholders to the table early on. Let's hear what everyone has to say. Let's get engaged in meaningful dialogue, genuine dialogue. Let's not check boxes and allow developers to trample our islands like they've been allowed to for far too long. Let's bring every everyone to the community and let's hear from the community itself and let's act on behalf of the communities and not special interests. Uh, those things have been going on too long. That's why people don't have trust in government. And that's why I wanna create an office of community engagement to help me be the eyes and ears of the mayor's office to prevent many of the controversies that have taken place around Oahu over the past several years. Mahalo. Mahalo to our candidates for your answers. The Hawaiian community is no stranger to all kinds of controversial topics. And our next uh, topic here is one that has seen our community rise and swell in ways never seen before. On September 6th, 2019, before taking down a structure at the base of the Mauna Kea Access Road. Law enforcement chainsawed the high Hawaii or the Hawaiian flag in half, um, chainsawing it in half, sparking huge statewide protests and the flying of our high Hawaii or our Hawaiian flags on vehicles. Honolulu County then cracked down this expression of free speech with fines ranging from $70 to $100. Convoys in support of protecting Mauna Kea have been unfairly targeted by police. One convoy from Kapolei to Kualoa on November 10th, 2019, was given 100 citations and parking alongside the highway was blocked for overfill parking. Our next question comes to us from Jamie Rodriguez of Kia'i Convoy from Lanakila, Oahu. Video, please. Aloha, Jamie Rodriguez, Kia'i Convoy, grassroots organization. As mayor, what would you do to ensure the protection of 
free speech of Oahu drivers and the unfair targeting of Kanaka Maoli drivers who choose to fly a high Hawaii in protest to TMT, the chainsawing of our, our high Hawaii, and the illegal occupation of Hawaii. Mahalo to Jamie Rodriguez for her question. And um, I'd also like to point out at this time that we've seen a swell of all kinds of flags and and um, there there have been all kinds of flags flying for several different reasons. But once again, tonight we have the opportunity to focus on the Hawaiian flag as it stands as our great symbol of hope for the Hawaiian community. As mayor, what would you do to ensure the protection of free speech of Oahu drivers and the unfair targeting of Kanaka Maoli drivers who choose to fly a high Hawaii in a protest to the TMT, the chainsawing our, of our Hawaiian flag and the illegal occupation of Hawaii? That is a question posed to our candidates. We would like to hear from you first, Rick. You have three minutes. Thank you, Hina. Well, this is something that goes right to the core of my belief system. I just retired from a 43 year career in broadcast media. Now in uh, First Amendment rights and freedom of speech was absolutely first and foremost on, you know, on my plate each and every day. So let me just say, cause this is a really black and white answer for me. that I believe in freedom of speech as guaranteed under the US constitution. And this includes speech that supports all positions including ones perhaps for me that I agree with or those that I do not. We've always made that a strong practice. So I honestly, now I would I'd have to learn more about the nature of the citations before commenting on that specific situation. But I can tell you that no group, especially the Kanaka Mobile, should be targeted for its views and protests, whether that was to TMT or the chainsawing of our high Hawaii, which you just alluded to, and for that matter, the illegal occupation of Hawaii. During our, in our news organization, we always try to make sure we gave extensive coverage, fair and balanced at all times. So I'm going to say it again. I am going to be very supportive of freedom of speech. I'm not going to target any groups, and especially our Hawaiian groups. This is, you are, this is our root culture. Thank you. Mahalo, Rick, for your response. Once again, the question is, as mayor, what would you do to ensure the protection of free speech of Oahu drivers and the unfair targeting of Kanaka Maoli drivers who choose to fly a high Hawaii in protest to TMT, the chainsawing of our high Hawaii or Hawaiian flag, and the illegal occupation of Hawaii. Keith, you have three minutes. Hello. Uh, well, first of all, the chainsawing of the high Hawaii on Mauna Kea was outrageous and unnecessary, and I don't understand why that happened. That should never happen again. In terms of free speech and the Hawaiian, uh, native Hawaiian caravans or convoys or uh, whatever the appropriate name is, uh, of course, I support free speech in every form possible. Free speech is one of the cornerstones uh, of, of our society. It's a way to express your opinions in a peaceful manner. And so uh, I don't see why any of that would be disallowed or, or uh, a subject of uh, police intervention. And so I support those efforts. Uh, the only caveat I would make is that if it's a uh, safety issue for whatever reason where the flags are being deemed too large, then well, maybe we need to address that. But short of that, uh, I'm in full support of Native Hawaiians or anyone else for that matter, expressing their views via using uh, the high Hawaii on their cars. Uh, to me, to say otherwise is to rub salt in the wound for Hawaiians who for years, if not decades, have felt disrespected uh, and not treated fairly, uh, to not allow them to express themselves in, in a, again, a peaceful manner is to me outrageous. Uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to uh, speak about you know the overall theme of respect because that's what this issue is all about and I want to talk about the importance of elected leaders like myself who need to be an ally to the Native Hawaiian community and not an enemy or an obstruction. 
Part of my role as mayor is to be a good ally to the Native Hawaiian community. I definitely not gonna have all the answers, but I'll need all of you to help me and I'm gonna look to you for guidance on how best to uh, work with the Native Hawaiian community. It also means standing up against those who don't support the Native Hawaiian community uh, that's in existence today in our society. I was completely outraged and upset by what, public, what President Trump said today about further, further marginal, marginalizing indigenous people. I'm simply disturbed by my opponent being such a close ally to the Grassroots Institute, who's clearly a group that's determined to eliminate rights and protections for Native Hawaiians. That's completely unacceptable. Mahalo. Mahalo, Keith, for your response. At this time, uh, we'll take this opportunity to have another little commercial to once again encourage our voters out there to please listen carefully to the answers that are being provided to us by our mayoral candidates in this evening's forum. I encourage each and every one of you to take to heart the future of our O'ahu and what will the leadership of O'ahu look like for the city and county of Honolulu. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our kuleana and our future generations will be counting on us to cast our vote for whom the person whom we feel will best represent the interests of not only the position of mayor, but also for our native Hawaiian community. Mahalo. We hold Omua, uh, moving forward now to the Papakolea community and the questions that they have put forward. Abandoned vehicles line the streets of the Papakolea community and bulk pickup requests require online access to request a pickup. Papakolea has a significant kupuna population who do not have access to the web. Our next question comes from Desiree Terry a lifetime homesteader from Papakolea. Elani? Two, three, go ahead. Okay. Our large populations of Kapuna taxpayers do not have access to computers and cannot do online bulky item pickup. Mahalo. Mahalo. So as mayor, Two, three. I apologize. It's in a two-part series. Auntie had to redo, um, redo a part of it. So this is the other part of it. Oh my, that's part two. So let me go back to part one. Wait, let me go try back. That's part two. Let me just close part two. There we go. Let me show the other part of her question. Oh my. Okay. This is the other part. Okay. As mayor, would you be open to entering a formal relationship with the DHHL to help with uh, clean up abandoned cars and bulky items in Papakolea. Mahalo. Mahalo to Desiree for that question. Once again, your question for this evening. As mayor, would you be open to making a formal partnership with the Department of Hawaiian Homelands to help with cleanup of abandoned cars and bulky items in Papakolea. We have a large population of kupuna taxpayers who do not have access to computers and cannot do the online bulky item pickup. We will hear from candidate Keith Amemia first. You now have three minutes. Well, the answer to the questions is yes to both. Uh, I live in Pao'o with my wife and son, and so it's more or less up the street from Papakolea. I have a lot of friends who live in Papakolea, including on Kapahu Street, uh, which is near the main road of Avayalimu. 
uh, it's difficult to find parking on, on those roads. There are so many abandoned cars in yards and on the street. And it's a source of frustration for many, many residents in Papakulea. And so I'm in full support of doing more and partnering with DHHL to rid their communities of the abandoned cars uh, and to help them in, with bulky item pickup. Um, we need to find an alternative means for residents to order bulky item pickup, whether that's phone or in writing. Uh, I'm open to doing whatever it takes to help Kupuna get their bulky items removed from their properties. It's simply unacceptable. And as I said, I've been there many times over, in fact, last weekend, uh, and it was tough to find parking and it was such an eyesore to see so many abandoned cars, both in yard and left on the street. Uh, I would also add that there's a third area that I wanna help Native Hawaiians in, on DHHL lands across the state, and especially of course on Oahu and including Papakolea. Broadband access is horrendous, it's terrible. Uh, you know, I hear so many problems with Native Hawaiians not having proper access, adequate access to broad, broadband service. It not only affects adults, it affects our students, especially now with school being fully online, at least for the moment. Uh, our young people in public schools can't do their homework. Uh, they, they have intermittent access, if not no access at times. So it further creates the disparity between Native Hawaiians and non-Native Hawaiians. And that's something that I wanna curb as mayor and put a stop to that for once and for all. Mahalo. Mahalo Keith for your response. Rick, as mayor, would you be open to making a formal partnership with the Department of Hawaiian Homelands to help with cleanup of abandoned cars and bulky items in Papakolea? We have a large population of kupuna taxpayers who do not have access to computers and cannot do the online bulky item pickup. Rick, you now have three minutes. Thank you, Hina. You know, I opened up tonight saying what a great honor it was to have this forum and how much I was looking forward to discussing the issues that would be raised through the questions you provided and then some, you know, and I really, as I said earlier, I found this to be a great learning experience for me but I'm not gonna sit here tonight and allow my opponent to take shots at me that are not right. It's the second time now in his last, his last answer when he alluded to the fact that I have some bogus affiliation with the Grassroots Institute of Hawaii. I have no such affiliation. And I happen to have taken a picture with Kevi Akina because as a representative of Hawaii News Now, as its president and general manager, I spoke to all kinds of groups around the state. And so to be able to say that in such a disparaging way, when this conversation should be elevated, especially when we're talking about respect of the Hawaiian people, I find really offensive and inappropriate at the highest level. Let's not politicize this discussion tonight while we talk about these issues that severely affect people who have really not been respected in their very homelands. So yes, I would like to discuss a partnership with DHHL to carry out a cleanup in the Papakalea area, including Kewalo and Kalawahini neighborhoods. But I don't believe the city, and this is the amazing part, needs a formal partnership to remove abandoned vehicles. This is one more sign of the lack of respect because as I understand it, the Department of Community Service has a free service which you can access online. I think it's called Free Junk Vehicle Program. And I don't understand why that's not going on because this is a basic city health and safety service enjoyed by other communities. This once again, is a sign of disrespect, a sign of neglect, and it's a failure of the current leadership that we have. So the issue of services for the houseless would work best with a partnership between the city, DHHL, OHA, the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, and the Queen Lilio Kalani Trust. And also, in my opinion, the city should also be using it's the seven Private Scares Act funds to help anyone found living in an abandoned vehicle. I'm gonna say that again. We should be using our CARES Act funds to help anyone who's found living in an abandoned vehicle. I think this is a moral obligation. It's how the city should be performing and we need to do this sooner rather than later. And under my watch, I'll be sure and I promise we will be doing this. Thank you. Mahalo, Rick. I'd like to thank both of our candidates, uh, Rick Lanjardi and Keith Amemia for continuing to answer these questions with passion, fervor and commitment on both of your behalf to our community with great focus, especially to our Native Hawaiian people. We're moving along right now to the next question. 
over the period of 38 nights starting in mid-October 2019 into November 2019. There were 206 arrests in an attempt to stop the transport of eight turbines from Kalailoa to Kahuku. The Napua Makani Wind Farm in Kahuku commissioned eight 56 stories tall, taller than the tallest building on Oahu, colossal wind turbines close to schools, churches, and homes. In this case, the voice of the people was not, was not heard, and so drastic steps were taken to stop this project approved by the Department of Permitting and Planning. Our next question comes from Kanaliloa Anuenue Ponciano, a Kia'i of Kahuku, who is with us live this evening. Oh, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Forgive me. The question that was posed to us by Kanaliloa Anuenue is as follows. In light of the Department of Planning and Permitting, excuse me, in light of the Department of Planning and Permitting record for putting developers over the will of the people and permitting with any regard to planning, community voice, or environmental concerns, what specific ways would you work to dismantle the unethical system and rebuild it? At this time, we will hear from Keith Amemia, you now have three minutes. Mahalo. I just want to point out that my opponent was the keynote speaker at a grassroots institute banquet. So it's mere, merely, or it's much more than a photo op uh, than he says. In terms of the Kuhuku wind turbines, that's a very polarizing issue. I know many people who were arrested, uh, their friends, their family, who live in the community and care deeply about their community. I've been to the Kohuku community quite a bit during the campaign trail, including several times in the last month. In fact, I drove up to one of the wind turbines. They're monstrosities. Uh, I, I got to think there's a better way to place them. I've got to think that the developer would have been more sensitive uh, to where those turbines are placed. No one would willingly want those types of turbines in their neighborhood uh, because of the sheer colossal size of them. Uh, as mayor, I've mentioned before the need to have more open dialogue, more open communication uh, between the city and the communities. My Office com of Community Engagement will seek to prevent these types of issues from happening, uh, to not only engage the community, but to engage the developer and the city government uh, as well including the city council. Uh, if we brought all the people to the table much earlier and not let the developer to check boxes and go through the process, uh, like going through the motions and without meaningfully seeking dialogue from the community, maybe this controversy would have been uh, avoided or maybe some kind of compromise would be made. I'm also a firm believer that if we're gonna burden a community with wind turbines, or a landfill at a very minimum, we need to provide a community benefits package. Now granted money alone won't take away the, the outrage and the mere spectacle of a dozen or two dozen turbines in your neighborhood, but at least it's something to help address the injustices that are being forced upon many of our communities, especially native Hawaiian communities on this island. Mahalo. Mahalo, Keith, for your response. Once again, the question from Kananiloa Anu Inue. In light of the Department of Permitting and Planning's record for putting developers over the will of the people and permitting with any regard, or without any regard to planning, community, voice, or environmental concerns, what specific ways would you work to dismantle the unethical system and rebuild it. We will now hear from Rick Blanjardi. You have three minutes. Thank you. you know, this is a really great example of why there's such a broken trust with government. You know, I've been out to Kahuku and you know, while I'm not an engineer of any sorts by training, but those windmills out there, uh, it just seems to me 
that's just absolutely wrong. So look, we've been on countless Zoom calls and every time we're on one, the subject of the Department of Planning and Permitting comes up. So it's no secret that DPP is not performing at a high level. And the highly critical audit we had last year makes it clear that there are a large number of problems that are obviously now gonna to have to be addressed by the next mayor. In fact, DPP is the city department the public is most critical of. That's been my experience on the campaign trail. And this is true on both sides of the coin from developers and contractors who feel the process is unnecessarily long and cumbersome to the community members who believe DPP favors developers over the general public. So I wanna say it again, this is a really important part of the next mayor is to get the Department of Planning and Permitting figured out because besides bringing in a knowledgeable, creative and committed leader, which is what I plan to do to fix DPP, I'm looking at doing be able to do this so that everyone from homeowners, applicants to large developers is treated in a fair and timely manner. So I wanna take a look at whether it makes sense to separate the planning function from the permitting function. It's something we've talked about a lot or we don't know enough about it right now. But if our assessment concludes that separating the two functions would benefit the public, I'll propose that to the council that they take the necessary steps to amend the charter and put the issue on the 2022 ballot for a vote by the people. But one thing I know for certain, it's not gonna be a quick fix, but we have to fix DPP. It's been long plaguing our people here in projects like this just become offensive, more than disruptive to a community. And I give you my word, we will do everything possible following that audit, following the blueprint to get things corrected. Thank you. Mahalo Rick for your response. At this time, we will now move on to the one question that was not sent previously to either candidate. We now move on to the topic that rocked through the entire Kanaka community, speaking about the issue of Mauna Kea. This is our very last question, uh, which requires a yes or no answer. However, uh, you will have two minutes to uh, respond. On July 15th, 2019, dozens of Honolulu police officers were sent to Hawaii Island to support law enforcement at the base of Mauna Kea after what was a heated day of standoffs and negotiations between authorities and opponents of the 30 meter telescope. As mayor, would you send Honolulu officers to Hawaii Island if there is another standoff on Mauna Kea in regards to the 30 meter telescope? Once again, this is a yes or no question. We will begin with Keith Amemiya. Two so minutes. my answer is no. Uh, I wouldn't send police officers from Honolulu to Hawaii Island to deal with the TMT issue. That's my answer. I'm done, you know. <laughs> Mahalo, Keith. All right. <laughs> Once again, as mayor, would you send Honolulu officers to Hawaii Island if there is another standoff on Mauna Kea in regards to the 30 meter telescope? This is a no. yes or no question? No. No. <laughs> okay, well, that's a fast. <laughs> no, I, I had a chance to think, I mean, I know, no. <laughs> Thank you to both uh, Rick and Keith for their very brief answer. Um, you'll forgive me. So I'm going to enjoy that, uh, that answer for just a moment. Um, I would like to acknowledge our viewer audience at this time. Thank you for continuing to stay tuned in. We're not done just yet. We have one more opportunity to hear from our candidates this evening on their final thoughts that they would like to say to our Kanaka community. Once again, folks, we thank you again for tuning in. We are almost uh, coming to a wrap, but we have yet one more opportunity to hear from both Keith and Rick. Uh, gentlemen, at this time, I would like to turn the next five minutes to the both of you 
to share your final thoughts. You are not required to take the five minutes, but we will give you five minutes each. Let us begin with you, Keith. Well, Mahin, uh, excuse me, Hina, mahalo for the opportunity and mahalo to everyone else who had a role in putting this event together. I cherish and I'm honored by this opportunity to be able to speak before all of you today and share my views on the various issues of concern to the Native Hawaiian community. As I said in my opening remarks, I was born and raised on Oahu. Oahu is my home. I love Oahu and I commit to you as mayor to give my heart and soul to making Oahu the best it can be. But I can't do it alone. I'm going to need partnerships with everyone in the community, especially all of you here in the audience today. It's going to take teamwork, but I'm convinced that if we stay together and work together, we are going to build a better and stronger Oahu for not only all of us, but for all future generations. With respect to the Native Hawaiian community, I have a deep love, passion, and commitment to working with you. I learned that early on in my life, and I learned it even more when I was in charge of the Hawaii High School Athletic Association. That job gave me the opportunity to go into every community across Oahu many times over, especially Native Hawaiian communities, which I never would have had the opportunity if I stayed in my career as a litigation attorney. Uh, I've learned firsthand the challenges and issues that Native Hawaiians face. I've seen firsthand how they get the short end of the stick far too often. I did what I could from a sports standpoint and academic standpoint to right those wrongs. And I'm committed to working with all of you to address the many issues that are facing you today. Aloha and mahalo. Mahalo Keith for your response. Ladies and gentlemen, let us turn our attention now to Rick Blanjardi uh, for his final comments. Take it away. Mahalo, Hina, and thank you again for this incredible opportunity. I sincerely appreciated this tonight. I started out tonight saying that it was a real privilege to run for the office of the city and county of mayor of Honolulu. So it's been true for me my whole life of living here. I feel very blessed having been born as far away as Cambridge, Massachusetts, to come here at the age of 18, you know, given how I grew up in a bilingual household, you know, with, with parents that worked hard their whole life, you know, this was a dream and it's been a dream my entire time. So rather than cite my resume, I would just want to say the following. This job right now, this is about leadership. When I made this decision to run for mayor, it was really a referendum on leadership. I looked at what had been happening through the lens of my newsroom and my own work in the community. And it was clear to me that we had some real problems in our community. And whether it was a, our chief of police falling from grace or disgracing the prosecutor's office or other issues, it was clear to me we had a broken trust. So this is a referendum on leadership. And when you get to leadership moments of which I've always been, compared to my opponent, I've been in the senior positions. I've been president of two national broadcast companies. I've always been in the alpha position running properties elsewhere across the country, Seattle, San Francisco, but certainly here, 31 of my 43 years in television, in broadcast for all to see have been here. But it's not just been my work inside of the television stations, it's been my work in the community and that outreach that I'm really proud of as well. Because in those capacities, I was also in senior leadership roles. Having been the chamber of the chamber, cha chair of the Chamber of Commerce, president of the Boy Scout, I could, there's a number of different outreach groups that I've been in those positions. All of that, I don't even like to talk about it, to be honest with you, but that's just come from a place of deep love and respect and wanting to give back. So when you come to a moment in time like this, this is a referendum on leadership. This is not about who, this is about what and what is needed. I've simply had a lifetime of being seasoned in very difficult jobs and turning those failing companies around. I've always been the person who was hired to replace the person who was fired and, and make it happen. And so when I came home in 2002, 18 years ago, I was very proud to come back to Hawaii. I had other options with my career. This is where I wanted to live. And since that time, I've done nothing but give back at every single level I possibly could. And I view this running for mayor as more of the same, but in a very critical way. And I'll say this, when I decided to run, I thought the issues would be about homelessness, something I've worked extensively on for the last 10 years. 
I thought the issue would be on rail, about accountability and transparency and fiscal management. I looked at the infrastructure issues we had. Last fall, we were doing so many different reports on neighborhood crime and violence, the amount of shootings that were going on. Elder care, our old elders are getting older issues. Even though we have an elderly affairs division at the city, we still lack the resources. On and on, but these were issues that spoke to my heart that I felt I could step up and make a difference on, and then COVID happened. So now we're talking about the economic recovery of the city and the state of Hawaii. This is no small challenge. I can tell you right now, trying to balance public health and, 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 and a stable economy is gonna be a daunting task while we try to get our economy going again. I'm gonna draw on all the years of experience I've had in leadership roles. I made this decision with my heart. Every time I've led with my heart and worked with that, it's always worked well for me. This is a love affair, of which I pledge to the people of Hawaii, to the island of Oahu and everyone, everyone that I will do my very, very best at, and I'm totally prepared to do it. So I wanna humbly ask for your vote. I thank you, Hina. This has been a real privilege tonight to talk about these issues that I sincerely plan on doing something about. As I said earlier, I wanna be the best mayor ever when it comes to working with our Hawaiian people. Mahalo. Mahalo, Rick, for your response. Ladies and gentlemen, before we adjourn for this evening, I would just like to say uh, once again, mahalo to both of our candidates for mayor who have graciously availed their time this evening to both Keith Amemia and Rick Blanjardi. Mahalo anuya olua. Thank you to the both of you for giving of your time to share your thoughts with our Hawaiian community about the various issues and the ways in which you stand to interface with our people. And if I may, because it wouldn't be, uh, it, it wouldn't be an event that I participate in without throwing something in about what we look to both of you for in moving forward. Whichever one of you succeeds in securing the position of mayor, we will expect that you will always have the flag of our people in a most respected and honored place and that you will do your absolute best to uphold the integrity, the dignity, and the respect of our people. With that said, we've heard your passionate responses to the questions that were posed tonight, and we look forward to whomever is successful in securing the seat of mayor to also um, to remember the bonds of aloha, and these bonds of aloha right now are quite divisive in our community. But as we look forward to the next person to step up to leadership in the position of mayor, no matter who wins, let us remember to have aloha for one another. And let us remember to always extend that hand of aloha, kindness, and consideration to one another, not only for our candidates, but to everyone out there who's paying attention and listening out there in viewer land. We'd like to give a special mahalo this evening to OEV TV. And we'd like to also uh, give our uh, gratitude and appreciation to our ASL interpreters and mahalo to the both of them. Thank you ladies for uh, providing this support and the assistance for our program tonight. And a very special mahalo to you, Heleni. Mahalo for the planning and preparation that went into assembling the questions and to communicating and coordinating with both Keith and Rick. And thank you for the time and dedication that you give to our community. Uh, Heleni, before we close, uh, would you like to have a final word this evening for our viewers? I just want to mahalo Hina for agreeing to host the show and thank you to Keith Amimia and to Rick Blangiardi. Um, this shows that you have uh, both of you. I'm very impressed with your answers, both of you. Uh, and I am kind of touched actually as a Kanaka Maoli that you were um, very heartfelt in some of your answers. But mahalo for attending and we hope that uh, 
good luck to both of you. Mahalo. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We wish all the very best to the both of you, Keith and Rick. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you tuning in, it is our kuleana to make sure that we raise our voices and cast our vote for the next person who will secure leadership as mayor for the city and county of Honolulu. Don't just sit back. Don't be moloa. Mai kakoe moloa. Mai kakoe hulikua. Ho omana o kako. O kokao a kuleana ho ikeia. E na kanaka o kuupai aina. O leila, e kia naina o keiahi hainei. Mahalo anu ia o ko, no ko kako launa ana ma keia wahi manawa, no keia meoro uh, candidate forum. Mahalo anu ia o ko, kia laho nui. Aloha. Thank you, everyone. And Aloha. have a wonderful evening. Aloha. Mahalo, Keith. Mahalo, Rick. Okay. Aloha. Aloha.